In the gaming industry, everyone has a story of what games they grew up with, whether it be from playing their first Mario game to even their first memory of seeing a video game on a TV. And no matter how old you are, everyone has that distinct time in their life when a video game brought joy to their childhood and can even attribute those specific games to starting their love for gaming. For me, a lot of my early video game experience came from my brother playing on the living room TV in our house. There were Nintendo games, early PlayStation 2 games, and even Xbox 360 games up on our big box. TV. But today I wanted to share with you all what video games really got me into gaming and where my earliest memories of these games originate from. And for everyone watching, put some comments down below talking about what games you grew up with. I would love to know where everyone's love for gaming originally started. Now imagine the time where you're in early grade school and the weatherman on the TV is talking about a potential snowstorm hitting the place you live. You wake up the next morning and you look out your window and see the dark early morning sky being lit up by the shining white snow. Before you know it, you get a call on your home phone that school is canceled for the day and you can do whatever you want. For me, I went outside and went sledding in my backyard. After playing in the snow for hours, I go inside in my warm house and see this colorful moving image on my TV and this pixelated red plumber hitting yellow boxes. I decided to sit next to my brother who was holding holding his gray controller with purple buttons and ask, what is this? He then explains, it's Super Mario World. From that point forward, I can sit in front of that TV for hours, watching my brother play through the various levels, showcasing Mario's fire and star abilities. For me, this experience happened around 2007. Of course, Super Mario World came out back in 1990, but having a much older brother meant seeing these old games on the living room TV. Now for me, I think Super Mario World is one of the best games ever created. Of course, I have a lot of bias, but many people that have played the game agree with me. Super Mario World was released back in 1990 as a launch title for the Super Nintendo. The game quickly became one of the most popular video games ever made and eventually sold over 20 million copies, making it the most sold SNES game of all time. Super Mario World gets praised for its colorful visuals, gameplay mechanics, level design, creatively fun music, and the ample amount of secrets hidden in many of the levels. This game also gets great reception because of how well it plays in current times. Of course, it's a 2D platform game, but there is something about the game that doesn't make it feel that dated. I think it's largely due to how great the game is at its core, but most importantly how minimalistic it is. There aren't these flamboyant visuals that scream the 90s, rather a simple illustration of Mario saving the day with 90s technology. Super Mario World also spawned many non-video game pieces of media and really accelerated the popularity of the Italian plumber. With growing up now and currently being 21, my nephew has recently been addicted to Super Mario World on the Nintendo Switch, and it's really weird seeing this video game cycle continuing through several generations. While making this video, I personally went back and played the game for several hours. I don't know if I'm just bad at platformers, but my rage was all over the place with dying over and over again. With all the rage though, I still found enjoyment and even sparked some other memories I had with this game back in the day when I used to be the spectator. But all in all, Super Mario World is what introduced me to video games and really started my addiction for Mario themed media back in the day. Presently, I'm not as much of a fan of the Mario franchise, but I couldn't tell you how excited I was back in the day watching my brother play the same levels over and over again. Batman Arkham City was the bridge from Nintendo to PlayStation games for me. Just like Super Mario World, I would watch my brother play through Arkham City for hours, just observing how cool Batman looked in this winter in Gulf City. Going from these fun and colorful Mario games to the harsh and desolate environment of Arkham City was a huge change for me, but it felt so cool watching Batman in this game, watching scenes with the Joker and how horrible he looked from the Titan incident in the asylum, to Hugo Strange's face being jammed into Bruce Wayne's view in the beginning of the game, and lastly being so scared of Solomon Grundy and realizing that this game is definitely not a Nintendo game and I'm in for a completely different video game experience. These amazing characters and the many others all throughout the city is what drove me to having the curiosity of what else was in this game and really wanting the knowledge of what happened to Arkham. Of course, I watched my brother play Arkham Asylum as well and I was even debating putting that game on this list. But Arkham City is really what drove me into the expansive atmosphere of the many genres of video games. Eventually manning up and wanting to try this game for myself, I put the retro looking PS3 controller into my hands and was barely able to get out of the fight as Bruce Wayne in the beginning of the game. So instead, I went on YouTube and watched Arkham City videos when my brother wasn't playing. With doing this, I eventually came upon the many easter egg videos and gameplay walkthroughs scattered around the website. I found videos such as the Scarecrow boat easter egg, the Harley Quinn pregnancy test, imagine finding that when you're 8 years 
years old, and a playthrough from the YouTuber Uberhaxer Nova, which also officially started my deep dive into the Let's Play universe on YouTube. I can even remember getting the 2011 Guinness World Record video game book and reading over each page that involved Arkham City. I was completely obsessed with this game and with having so much experience with Arkham City throughout the past 13 years, I can honestly say this is one of, if not the best, video game ever made. I've also never seen an opinion about this game stating that they didn't like it either, which is pretty cool to see. But back in 2011 when the game was released on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, the game quickly became one of the fastest selling games in history and sold 2 million units in the first week of release. Additionally, it was one of the highest rated games of 2011 and received several awards from the 2011 Spike Awards. Looking back on playing and watching this game in 2011, it is clear that this game deserved all the high praise it got from the community. And lastly, all I can say is, is that I'm very grateful to have seen this game because I don't think I'd be in the spot I am with video games currently without Batman Arkham City. The last game that I can attribute to my love for gaming and really what got me into multiplayer gaming is an FPS that came out November 12th 2012. This game grossed over $500 million in its first 24 hours, making it the biggest entertainment launch of all time during 2012. The game then went to gross $1 billion in the first 15 days and many people regard this game as one of the best in the series. That game being Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Prior to playing Black Ops 2, I had never touched a multiplayer game. However, that changed the day my mom let me skip school to get the game at GameStop for PS3. I remember actually jumping right into zombies for the first time I loaded up the game, and my first game was on transit and I honestly honestly felt terrified because this was my first zombies experience on my own and having zero map knowledge. Thankfully, it was a public lobby so my 10 year old self could get carried, but around a month later is where the game truly changed me. I had started school and all my friends had Xbox 360s. Now for me, I was a PS3 kid and I was all alone on that console. Thankfully, I was able to get the 4GB black Xbox 360 after my brother had sold the OG white console. But my first game with my friends was incredible. I loaded up into an Xbox Live party for the first time ever and we all played on the map hijacked while I listened to every single footstep with my turtle beaches. Prior to this I would go to friends houses and play split screen on the new DLCs because PlayStation players got all the DLC a month later. Now I was able to play with my friends and truly enjoy the best Call of Duty ever made. Unfortunately the game is pretty unplayable today due to hackers but the game as a whole holds up so well. The entire experience of campaign, multiplayer, and zombies aged perfectly and I would even be happy if this game released in current times. It is just that good Good and timeless. So, thank you to Black Ops 2 and the incredible console of the Xbox 360 for getting me into my favorite multiplayer game ever made. I had a bunch of other games in mind for this video, but I feel like these three really captivated how my love for gaming grew. Without these three games, I wouldn't be into this incredible hobby and would really miss out on a lot of fun childhood memories. Let me know in the comments what games define your childhood and what games really got you into the video game space. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.